Hello, I'm Diana Keogh, Editor-in-Chief of ShareWork.com. Today we're talking to pastoral counselor Andre Rellinger about infidelity. Andre has agreed to take questions that have come in over the internet from our members. Andre, the first question was posted on our Facebook page. My husband cheated on me. How can I ever trust him again? Trusting our spouse after there's been infidelity is very difficult, but it is the key of starting the relationship over. If you can't develop trust, you may as well not try. Only 31% of marriages survive the admission of adultery or infidelity. So only less than one in three survive. If you're going to survive, here's what you've got to do. You've got to decide to forgive. Your, your partner has to decide, your spouse has to decide to own what they did, to, to buy into counseling and healing and getting better. They have to repent. And so if you're able to forgive them, your marriage has a chance. So that's the biggest key, I think, is repentance and you being able to forgive. Andre, the next question was posted anonymously on our website. This member asks, Are there specific characteristics that are often found in couples who cheat? Well, if someone doesn't want to spend time with you, you know, when we get, when we're in courting and we're dating and we're preparing to get married, we spend a lot of time together with joint accomplishments. We're doing things together. We share hobbies. We share interests. If you begin to see the other person uh, not paying attention, not being, not caring about what you have to say, not listening to you, not paying attention to your needs. Those are, those are some signs that maybe they're not uh, engaged in the relationship at the level they need to be. This question was left for us on Pinterest. Is there anything a couple can do to protect their marriage? You know, I love the analogy that the farmer, farmers use when they plant, when they don't want weeds to grow, the most effective thing they can do is plant something in the ground. And so in our marriages, in our relationships, the most effective thing we can do to protect them is to be proactively building into them. We need to prioritize our spouse, find out what they like, find out what their needs are, what are their emotional um, hot buttons, and then we need to go about meeting those needs. We need to spend time together. We need to have some joint goals. We need to accomplish things together, especially if you're an empty nester and your kids have gone away and now you, for 20 years, you've worked on the kids, you need to have some new projects together. This question came in over Twitter. I'm single and dating. How can I tell if a man is telling me the truth about being married or not? Do they have a tan on their finger, on the ring finger line? When you call them, do they not answer the phone? When you're with them and their phone rings, do they get nervous when you pick up their phone? So there's some little some little signs like that. How willing are they to be vulnerable with you and their and their numbers? And have they brought you by their house? Do they show? Has he int- has he introduced you to her parents or his parents? So those kind of things. A- ask to be involved at some level with uh, the deeper things in life. Andre, thanks so much for joining us here on Sherwick. This has been really good information. If you'd like more on the topic of healing from infidelity, please go to our website at www.sherwick.com.